Researching a firm's deals is a great way for you to learn more about what that firm does. This will help you in developing your understanding of that firm, but will also convince them that you've done the research into them. A lot of people mention deals throughout the application process. Usually it's just name dropping a deal in there just to show that you know about it. But if you understand the deal and know the context behind it, you'll be much more confident speaking about it in your application form or your interview and you'll get a lot more out of it. So I'm going to go through a three step research process that you can use to pick the right deal, understand it fully and get all the commercial value out of it. This way you can use it in your application forms, interviews or wherever else it might come up. The first step in this process is to find the right deal. Head over to a law firm's website and go to the news or deals section. From here, there are a few things you should think about when trying to pick the right deal. You should look for a deal that's complex, has enough law firm involvement for that specific firm and is linked to the reasons that you're personally applying to that firm. So let's run through all those three things again. Firstly, the deal needs to be complex. By that, I mean that there should be enough going on in that deal so that you have enough to unpack and show off all your commercial awareness skills. Secondly, as I mentioned, there needs to be sufficient law firm involvement of that specific firm that you're applying to. With complex commercial deals, it's not unusual for more than one firm to be working on a deal. Sometimes firms will mention a deal on their website, even though they were one of many firms working on that, and even though they weren't doing the majority of the work on that deal. So when you're picking a story, you need to make sure that the firm you're applying to has played a big enough role in that deal that you can talk about what they did. Finally, I mentioned that it should be something that's linked to the reasons that you're personally applying to that firm. Finding a story that you're personally interested in or aligns with your reasons is really beneficial for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you have a real interest in it, your enthusiasm will show through when you come to write about it or talk about it in an interview. And secondly, when it comes to researching that deal, it's much easier for you to do if you're actually interested in that deal as opposed to trying to research about something that you don't really care about and you find really boring. So let's run through a quick demonstration. Say I was applying to Taylor Wessing's London office and I was really interested in Taylor Wessing because they're big into technology and that's what I'm interested in as well. First, you head over to the news section on their website and then filter the stories down to the recent stories that are related to the UK office. From there, you wanna find a story that hits those three points that we spoke about. For example, I found one that was called advising on a complex public M&A transaction for Boku. Then what I did was that I ran through those three points that I mentioned earlier. First, you wanna think about if it's complex enough. Aside from having the word complex in the title of the actual story, this one has a lot of issues in it as well. It's a large public acquisition, and as well as that, there are some banking and finance elements too. Next, you wanna think about law firm involvement. So as I mentioned, in complex transactions, there are often multiple firms working, and that's exactly what's happening here. Another firm, Wilson Sonsini, is also helping out with this deal, especially with the US-related stuff. However, it does say that Taylor Wessing's corporate M&A, capital markets, banking and finance teams were all involved. So I would say that Taylor Wessing did play a big enough role in this deal for me to be able to speak about what they did. Finally, you're looking for personal interest. And I'll be honest with you, for the purposes of making this video and this demonstration, I didn't really care about that. I just tried to pick one that hits the other two points and I wasn't too fussed about having personal interest. But even just in doing the research for this video and reading just a little bit about the deal, I actually really developed an interest in this story. So just to give you some background, Oku is a mobile payments company and they purchased Fortumo who were big in the direct carrier billing industry. Direct carrier billing, or DCB as they call it, is a different way to pay for digital goods online. So whenever you're buying something online, like let's say like an app or a song or subscribing to a new digital subscription service, instead of paying with, for that service with your credit card, you can instead use direct carrier billing, which means that you'll just say, yeah, I wanna buy this thing, and then the cost of that product will get added to your phone bill. So the benefit of this technology is that essentially you don't need to have a credit card or anything. All you need is a SIM card and a network provider that you pay a bill to. Oku already also works with Google, Microsoft, Spotify, and all of those big companies as well. I don't know why this has become an ad for Boku. I just thought it was a really cool product and a cool deal. But my point was that if you do have a personal interest in the story, it hopefully does come across when you speak about it. But if you found that story boring, that's completely fine. Just pick one that you think is a bit interesting. The second step is that you need to be the client. 
Now, I don't mean that you have to go set up a company and hire that law firm to work for you or do any work for you, although that would be a massive power move when it comes to the applications. But what I do mean is that you need to put yourself in the shoes of the client. And in doing this, your research strategy has to be a little bit different than what we did in the first step. Let's go back to that Taylor Wessing example. What we learned on Taylor Wessing's website was that Boku acquired Fortumo and there were some lawyers involved working on different elements of that deal. But we didn't really learn the commercial reasons why that deal even took place. So what you're going to want to do is Google the deal just to get some background on it. And that's exactly what I did for this deal. So I Googled the deal and I found the page on Boku's website where the CEO of Boku goes over exactly why they thought this is a good idea to go ahead with this deal. So let's have a listen to what he has to say. Fortumo is, is basically the second most profitable organization operating global carrier billing. So what this transaction does is bring together the two most profitable players in the DCB market. We're very fortunate in the sense that the two organizations are pretty compatible. So Fortumo has tended to focus on relatively smaller uh, companies um, and the geographical uh, strength is also something that works well. So Fortumo has a number of direct carrier connections in Asia in places where Boku does not and happily the technical stats are very compatible. So you've got a, a company that an operational, a cultural, a geographical level is very well you know, matched. So you can see how much more you can learn by stepping into the client's shoes. You don't just get the legal elements, but you get the commercial reasons as to why this deal even took place. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did get very lucky with this deal, but as soon as I Googled it, I found a website from Boku itself and from the CEO explaining all the commercial reasons why they went ahead with this. However, there were still loads of other websites that were discussing this deal, and there will be loads of other websites that are discussing your deal too. And it's important to read all of these just to get the benefit of those different perspectives as well. The third and final step is that you need to look to the future. Now that you've picked the right deal and you've understood the commercial reasons behind it, you need to look to the future to see how the relationship between the client and this lawyer can develop after the deal. Ask yourself what problems a client might run into after this deal and how it could bring in extra work for that law firm, maybe in different departments. This is another test of your commercial awareness or commercial understanding. And it's a bit more difficult because we're talking about things that haven't happened and you kind of have to think about what might happen. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible. The best way I can go about explaining this is to again, just go back to our example. Now, one of the reasons for Boku's acquisition of Fortumo is that it wanted to expand into Asia. And when I was reading about it, I read that they really wanted to push into Indonesia. The reason for this is that Indonesia has a big population, but they don't have a lot of credit card usage. However, a lot of people there do have phones and SIM cards. So this sort of direct carrier billing technology really seems to make sense there. But as a company is moving into new geographical territories, there might be new regulations that it has to comply with that it might not be familiar with. So as a payment provider, Boku would probably have some sensitive data from its users. And if it has sensitive data from Indonesian users in Indonesia, there might be other regulations that it has to follow there. Taylor Wessing's data protection team might be able to advise on how best it can comply with these regulations. Another example that came up in this research was that in acquiring Fortumo, Boku was taking on 75 staff from Fortumo who are all based in Estonia. In bringing on these 75 new staff, Boku might need some advice from the employment team at Taylor Wessing as well as to how best to do that. This section of looking to the future is a bit challenging and does require a bit of forecasting or guesswork. But essentially all you're doing is coming up with commercial issues and then linking it to how a law firm might help you solve that problem. So I hope you learned something from this research technique. Just to sum up the three sections again, it was first to find the right deal, second to be the client, and third to look to the future. This research method will ensure that you have a full understanding of the deals that you're talking about in your application form. You won't just be name dropping them anymore. You will be able to confidently speak about these deals in depth. Another side benefit to going through this research process is that it's forcing you to think commercially at pretty much every step. So if you're stuck as to how you can practice and develop your commercial awareness, just go through this three step process with loads of deals and just keep practicing it until you get better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought by leaving a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a comment down below. Also, if you are liking my content, consider subscribing so you're kept up to date with anything new that I post. I also have an Instagram page where I post updates and chat to people where they tell me what new topics they want me to cover. So if you want, you can go and follow me there as well. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you next time.